Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us um, this afternoon for our second um, Students Talk to You um, event in this series that we're doing this spring. Uh, today's topic is um, really about group work. And I am joined um, by Ellie, who is one of our CoLab student affiliates. And I think they talked a little bit about this in our first event yesterday. So I just want to, for anybody who doesn't know, um, just let you know the backstory to now the other clock is going. Sorry. At least it's three o'clock and not noon, because then we'd have to pause for a long time. Um, so I wanted to give you a little bit of the backstory of this series. These um, three events, uh, the topics were all proposed and chosen by our CoLab student affiliates, um, and they each um, were then given an opportunity to kind of align with a different one that they wanted to talk about and be part of the the event. So Ellie um, was the student who proposed and wrote up a little bit um, in that proposal about group work. And um, so I want to go ahead and get started. I want to give Ellie a chance to introduce um, herself. As you all know, I am Martha Burtis. I work in the CoLab. I'm Associate Director and Learning Developer. And Ellie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the group? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Ellie. I'm a senior environmental biology major here um, on the swim team. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, and actually, I think all of those things will probably come out a little bit in the in what we've prepared for today. The way that we're going to run this um, event is really informal. Ellie and I are basically going to have a conversation. We've already had this conversation once, and we had Ellie had lots to say. And so I have a, a bunch of questions. Ellie knows kind of the, the overall scope of those. We're gonna just talk about these issues. Um, we're hopefully gonna have a little bit of time at the end. I think we'll talk about for about half an hour, a little time at the end though, for you to ask questions or share any thoughts um, about what Ellie shares today. Um, feel free to use the chat. And you know if there's something that you, thank you, Robin. Um, if there's something that comes up that you want to just jot down in the chat uh, to remember either to ask later or I can I can try and weave in and incorporate some of what people say um, in the chat as well. So to just get us started on this topic, um, Ellie, can you tell us um, a little bit about the kinds of group projects and group work that you've done during your time at PSU and maybe give us um, one or two examples of different kinds of group projects that you've been involved in? Sure. Um, I think probably the biggest group project I was in was a class that centered around this project. So basically the entire class was us just working and then presenting this project to the rest of the class. But I've also been in small group projects that lasted a few weeks. And then my bio um, introductory class, you work as a group throughout the whole semester with your um, lab mates. So thanks, that's, that's a great um, kind of foundation piece here. So lots of different kinds of groups that you're talking about, everything from big, full-on, semester-long projects to, um, to smaller, you know, like you said, a couple week-long assignments that you might work on with other people, but also that interesting example too from bio of not necessarily like a big project that you're working on with the same people all semester, but the same people you're working with all semester every week on something new. Um, mm -hmm. In that case, lab reports, um, I think is what you had told me. So what is your overall, what is your overall experience of group work been? Or, and what is your overall opinion about how it's, how it's been for you? Um, well, my overall experience has been generally negative. So which I guess makes my opinion of group work. Um, not the highest, but I think that there are definitely ways we can improve group work to make it more cohesive to a better learning experience. And in, in your experience with what you've, um, with the, the kinds of projects that you've done and the kinds of um, experiences you've had with your classmates, what kind of do you feel goes wrong for you? Like where do things break apart, fall apart for you? I think the majority of the time it's hard to get everyone to set specific, I guess, like goals. 
and then have everyone in the group meet them. Most of the group work I've done, I have ended up doing the majority, if not the entire project myself, just because I will look at the document the night before and nothing will be done and it's due the next day. So someone has to do it. Um, and if I'm not the one doing the entire project, I'm often left with the feeling that, oh, I could have done this better by myself. Why do I now need to take a lesser grade? Because um, my professor wanted me to work in a group. So I, I'm, look, I'm looking at the people who we have gathered here and I'm thinking, you know, it's possible that um, all of us were those kinds of students. Or I was <laughs> always the slacker. I was always <laughs> yeah, the right. No, I'm just kidding. That doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah, so I think uh, I think your experience is is not necessarily unique. I think lots of people share that frustration in group work, and I, there's going to be opportunity to kind of dig a little deeper into what that all means. I want to take a moment to pause though and ask you this question, which is, um, and I know because there's different kinds of group assignments, different times of group work, there isn't a single answer to this. So feel free to give different examples. But generally, how when this kind of work gets introduced in class, how do faculty go about introducing it to you as students? Like, what has your experience been of that? Um, I found the majority of the time it's just, okay, we're working in groups. Here are your groups. Um, go off, split up the work, come up with a plan we may, with the semester long project, my professor checked in with us every week to see how we were progressing, but um, it's never been introduced to me as a, this is why we're doing it um, and so forth. So fairly cursory introduction, it sounds like, um, kind of like put you in groups, give you assignment, everybody is, should be off and running at that point. Is, is that fair? Has Have you ever been involved in a group where there was a lengthier kind of orientation to the project or introduction to the project? Or has it has that basically been your experience across the board? The professor will generally introduce the project itself, but mm -hmm. not um, the, like the group work or anything like that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So a, a really interesting observation. I Fascinating. Think there. We're already getting somewhere. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so there's, there's the introduction of the assignment, which is, you know, what is the work that you're going to do, but then what about introducing that component that is group work um, and how, um, how that might need to, how students might need to be oriented to that. Have you ever had a chance, I'm, I'm going to start going into a series of questions here, just so everybody kind of understands the trajectory that are sort of based upon um, practices that get recommended, right? When, when you, you, if you look out, go out and look at the literature and look at the research about doing group work and how to improve it, these are the kinds of things that you might see um, recommended to faculty as po possible improvements. So the first one is, have you ever been involved in a group, Ellie, where prior to the group, prior to even the group formation, maybe even, there was some kind of pre-group survey or pre-group group, like sort of, um, <laughs> a uh, questionnaire, something to help, uh, to help kind of get at different students' aptitudes, different students' styles, different students' um, expectations of, of group work before launching into the project itself. No, I've never been a part of a project where that has been done prior. Okay. Most of the time, if not all the time, it's these are the random people you're assigned with. Go work um, with them. As a follow up to that, have you ever been in a in a in a, in a assignment or project where what, even once the groups are formed, either um, like informally or as a requirement, you had you kind of came up with kind of group rules or talked about sort of like who are the different people in this group? What are our different expectations? What are our different strengths and weaknesses? What's our style of working? Has that ever been like an official component of the the project or just something that you informally did as a group? For the project I mentioned earlier that was semester long, we had to come up with sort of a schedule at the beginning of the project and then try and keep up to date with our goals um, throughout the semester and check in with our professor. Um, 
I didn't find that to be helpful. It was still myself doing the majority of the work um, just in smaller increments. But so you, so it sounds like you've had experience with sort of, um, or, or, or expected to do sort of a kind of project management mm -hmm. component where, you know, in that case, it sounds like you were coming up with, you know, um, expectations for when, when work would be done, when certain deadlines needed to be hit, but maybe not um, any formal or informal component of group work where as group members, even before you start working, you just talk about style and um, expectations and maybe even like what are the different um, sort of pressures that different group members are juggling, like who's got you know, a full-time job on top of this. And so their hours may be different or who's, you know, involved in a bunch of clubs and sports. And so they may have limited amount of time. Um, has, has that ever been a component of the work? Has, have you ever really spent time sort of unpacking that as a group? No, I've never been part okay. of a group that did that. So that is one kind of strategy that um, generally um, is sometimes recommended is either a pre-group, um, orientation or activity to sort of help figure out, you know, what those different styles are, what those different expectations are, and then even forming groups around those, which, you know, there, there's a little bit, uh, that's a little bit strange too, because you're like, okay, well, if you find all of the, the students who are, who are Ellie's, who are a little bit type A about this and want to get everything done on time and are not procrastinators and you put them in a group, they probably have pretty good outcomes there. But then, so who are you going to put in the other groups? Are you going to be like, well, the rest of you just figure it out. But at the same time, as Ellie has talked about balancing, trying to do a balanced thing where you're like, well, we'll match the, the non-procrastinators with the procrastinators, that doesn't magically turn, you know, one of them into the other, right? So, um, and I say that as like a consummate procrastinator, like I have accepted at this point in my life that I work best when I am on like tight deadlines, but that does not make it easy for my, you know, my group members necessarily. So um, do you feel like having that opportunity to maybe spend some time with your group members? I mean, even if it's not part of the pre-formation, but maybe after groups have been formed, just to like throw all the cards on the table and say, here guys, you know, this is the way I tend to work. This is what, um, this is how I can, this will allow me to play to my strengths. What about you? Like, what do you bring? What, what challenges are you facing? How can we all work to accommodate those things as well as sort of like um, lift up those strengths that we have? Do you feel like that could be helpful? Yeah, I think that sitting down at the beginning of an assignment would with the group and just kind of talking over what the expectations are, what, we all want out of the project, how we can lean on each other for support in different ways would definitely be helpful. I think that probably the only way to get that done would be have it um, a part of the graded portion, just because I don't think groups are going to sit down and do that by themselves. Yeah. And I was just going to say, it may even be, it depend, I mean, one of the things that I think sometimes gets lost when we talk about group work is that we focus so much on like the work that people have to do together. We forget that these are also just humans, right? <laughs> Who have to figure out how to work together and they may be complete strangers. And so there's interpersonal dynamics there that are, can be really, really challenging. And so unless it's sort of an expectation that you're going to have that conversation, everybody's going to have that conversation, maybe even some guidelines about how to have that conversation. Um, I could see it being a little bit kind of anxiety producing or stressful or weird to be like, I'm going to be the group member who's going to say, now we need to have that conversation, especially if you really don't know these people at all. Another strategy that sometimes I think people employ is, um, and this depends a little bit on the kind of assignment and, and the, the ebb and flow of the semester, but um, allowing students to change groups. So for example, um, maybe a good example of this would be in that bio class you talked about where you had a set group of students who were your lab partners and every week you were collaborating on doing a lab report together, but maybe you know five weeks into the semester, there would be an opportunity for students to switch things up or even an expectation that everybody is gonna move groups um, once or twice a semester. Have you ever had an opportunity to switch groups or you know, rethink your group assignment? 
no, all of the groups I've been in have been um, set for the project or set for the semester, like the um, lab groups. I think that that would be a great opportunity to give students, but I think it's hard to pick who you're going to work with yeah. well in a group project, just because I know some of my friends who I would love to have spend time with in class, but <laughs> you don't I, don't think we would, I don't think we would create a very good project together. Yeah, it's a really fair point. Um, that sometimes, in fact, like the people who you're best closest with are the worst people for you to do certain kinds of work with. Um, and I, I, I can't remember, I know I'm getting our conversation the other day and our conversation today mixed up in my brain. So I just wanna um, return to this point because I know we talked about it at some point, which is that it, you, ha I, have you ever had a chance, do you generally get a chance to choose your groups or are they chosen for you by, by faculty members? All of the group projects I've been a part of, um, the groups have been chosen by either the faculty or just yeah. wherever you sat the first or day. Or it's random, exactly. Yeah. Do you feel, and again, this kind of piggybacks on what we were just talking about, but do you feel like there's any value to having students have some say in where they land in a group? I think so, just because it gives, it'll, it, sorry. It would give some people the opportunity to build a group that made them work better together. But I think also, especially in an introductory class, coming in as a freshman and being told, okay, pick your group, but you don't know anyone, that's very, um, where do I go? Absolutely. It's very stressful, I think. Yeah, it's super overwhelming. Mm -hmm. On the switching group thing, I was going to say as an example, I think I, I can't remember if I shared this with you the other day. I taught a class a few years ago that was a, a semester long assignment, kind of high stakes working with external community partners assignment project. Um, and there was an initial, the first thing that they had to do was kind of an intake, meet with the partner and write up a report about what needed to be done. And I took a pause at that point in the class and I gave students the opportunity then to privately to me communicate if they wanted to switch groups at that point and it could be for any reason it could be because they just decided they really weren't as interested in working with this community partner as they thought it could be that the project itself ended up being something that they didn't feel like it really you know was an area they were interested in developing but it also could be because they felt like the interpersonal dynamics weren't working out well for them um it's a it, it's an interesting and it was kind of as I recall very few students asked to switch and it wasn't you know it wasn't a huge deal but it you know it, it presents some opportunities but also some challenges I think about how you would handle that um so yeah the whole switching group thing I think um dep again depending on how you're able to lay out your assignment your semester can there can be some interesting ways of approaching that but it isn't necessarily a you know a magic bullet you know that you know just it's just a matter of like in a few weeks you're going to know who the students in the class are who who you would be able to work best with um so another strategy that is sometimes recommended is to typically what tends to happen when we have some group projects is we really like hit the hit the ground running right like you're in a group it's a big project here's the big first big assignment like the one i just described like that first thing that that the groups were doing was pretty high stakes going out and writing these reports another strategy is to be is to kind of ease into this a little bit recognizing again that what you're dealing with here is not just about getting work done but about getting a group to work together and so maybe starting with some more lower stakes ungraded maybe or you know barely graded work maybe a little bit more um, less formal work, a little bit more fun work even as a way for groups to just a, get to know each other, right? Um, but also to begin to understand a little bit about the different ways in which they work and how they work together. Have you ever had a chance in a group project to do that kind of um, approach where you know there were some lower stakes, smaller things that you did as a group first, just to ease into the group work as opposed to all in all at once? I have not, but um, I think that's a very interesting way to introduce group work. And I think it would be very helpful if more 
professors would start with that, if not only do group work in that regard with it mm -hmm. being very low stakes. Um, your final grade isn't determined by how well you work with these people. Um, because I do understand the value of group work. And I think that having to work with other people is something you're going to have to do the rest of your life. But when your final grade is being determined by the quality of the work other people produce, it um, makes it very stressful and very hard to just sit down and think, okay, I just have to let what happens happen. Yeah. So can I just jump in yeah. with two questions? Cause you're Absolutely. saying so many interesting things. Mm -hmm. I, I do notice that you keep returning to the, the grade and how, and I remember this, you know, like how all like exactly what you just said, right? Like my grade depends on someone else's work. And that just feels so unfair sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like um, you would have less frustration with group work if that grading piece was not in the mix? Yes, definitely. I think it would be much easier to work with people towards a, maybe even a better end product because then you kind of have to sit down and help them with their weaknesses as opposed to reading through it. Now and presenting them or reading through it and thinking, I'm just gonna do this because the quality of work you're producing isn't going to so, give us a grade that's yeah. up to that's mind. So fascinating. <laughs> so fascinating, Ellie. And it's not easy what you just said in the sense like, we can't just be like, oh, we solved it. Now we just yeah. get rid of grades, right? But I mean, that's really interesting what, what you're saying. Um, okay, I have more questions, but I'll hold them to the end because they're not related exactly to this. <laughs> and you knew exactly where I was headed because we were about to go into this whole question of um, sort of evaluation and grades because I know Ellie has some feelings about this. <laughs> um, and uh, before we do that, I'm just gonna mention the one other practice and we won't get into it because you've already kind of talked about it. The one other practices that is, that's often um, suggested is this idea of having um, uh, the way I've referred to it before is a kind of group contract. So like part of the group work is developing a project plan that lays out, you know, the various roles of the members, um, the, the work that each member is going to do, the deadlines that they need to hit, and then, um, and then having sort of maybe even weekly check-ins against that contract where faculty and group members sit down and talk about how things are progressing. Um, it's not, again, it's also not a magic cure. And I think the way, it, when I've seen it work best, it's when there's also been an opportunity for revision built into that process so that at, at certain points, the group could come back and revise the contract in collaboration with their professor to make sure that, um, you know, they haven't set themselves up for something that's impossible. Like if they get three weeks in and discover there's a problem, they can, they can go back and they can kind of rejigger stuff. So that's another practice. The, um, Ellie did mention, you know, having had experience with that um, approach as well, and maybe it not being also not being the magic solution. So that so now I really want to dig in, and Robin has kind of started on us on this dig into sort of like where are you, things really? You see, oh, there was a hand. Um, oh, Leslie sorry, Emily. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Whose hand was it? Leslie. Leslie. It was mine. And you started to actually partially answer my question because one of the things I was thinking through in this is um, kind of the pre um, group work, the pre project um, kind of foundation setting, like all the things from thinking about like strengths and weaknesses of, that you bring to groups and whatnot, but thinking about then how you build those continued touch points to make them successful. Because at times, maybe when a group project or group work begins, you don't fully have a sense of who is going to be maybe the more evident leader versus the one that isn't. So I'm thinking from like an instructor standpoint, what are some more of those ways in which we build kind of touch points to bring that, the fulfillment of that contract, the fulfillment of their strengths? Because I think the other piece of this too is like, maybe we're not investing enough time on helping students think about how to do conflict resolution. And that's a huge issue. Like when I saw Hannah's comment before, like, that's something that we face in the workplace, right? And so unless we're given that 
that environment and that structure to think about how to manage conflict. Like it's hard in the workplace. I can't, it's much harder to do it with somebody that's your peer. So. Yeah, I, I taught a class my last semester at Mary Washington um, that was a huge, huge like class-wide group project. The entire class was collaborating on a single project. It was big, it was high stakes, it was like tons of moving parts. And, and my co-instructor, Jesse and I spent most of that semester doing conflict <laughs> resolution training, like helping students understand and also, this is the hardest part of it is helping students understand that there isn't always a resolution. That like, that's part of this too, is that, and that like even us as the instructors can't swoop in and magically make a group work differently or make a person work differently. And so helping students to navigate that is really interesting and tricky. But also, as you say, Leslie, I think it's really important because the whole reason why I felt like I could do that, I don't have any training in conflict resolution, but like life trained me for that, right? My jobs have trained me for that. My work has trained me for that. So, but let's talk, uh, go back, going back to this, Ellie, let's talk a little bit about like where things fall apart for you, because it's clear that like you, you have not had a group of group work experience that's been like, that was amazing. Um, what is it that you feel like brings you the most stress with group work? Is it about grades? Is it about interpersonal dynamics? Is it about being the kind of person who's just worried about do always doing your best work? I understand all of those things may be important to you, but what's the real, the real sort of like wrench in the works for you when, when somebody says, okay, we're going to Somebody says, we're gonna do a semester long group project and you feel that pit in your stomach. Like, where is that coming from for you? For me, I think it's a lot of the grade. Um, and in group settings, when my group mates are evidently, um, I think it becomes very evident who is going to become the leader in a group very early on. Um, and if no one steps up to that role, I often will. But if there's someone else in my group that takes that role on, I'm more than happy to sit back um, and just be a group member. But I think that it's very hard to um, like collaborate with people when you don't know how they're going to be in a group prior. And, and going, so going to that grade piece of this and following up on what Robin had asked earlier, how have grades generally been assigned for the groups that you've been a part of? Like, what does that look like? It is usually um, every one gets the same grade. If not, um, the everyone gets the same grade on what we turn in, but then based on how you present the information, you get a separate grade based on your presentation because obviously it's easier to tell who doesn't know the material when you're standing in front of a class presenting it. Are you ever, have you ever been given the opportunity to, to do either self-evaluation or peer evaluation for group work and how does that go? I think all of the group projects I've been a part of have done at least peer evaluation. And even if I do the entire project, I will never say that to my instructor. Um, I just feel so terrible for um, to, to ruin someone else's grade. I feel as if I don't know what's going on in other people's lives. And I, while I'm upset with this person, I just can never bring myself to email my professor and say, you know, they didn't do anything. Yeah, if there's one takeaway I want people to hear, <laughs> Um, it's what you just said, which is that peer evaluation, which I think we so often look to as being like how we solve this is not a perfect tool. And for all the reasons that you just said, Ellie, there are students who are just, I mean, if we're going to talk about like how just the interpersonal um, dynamics of group work, working with a bunch of strangers for a semester is difficult, then add on. Now we're going to ask you to evaluate those people based on some criteria that may not, probably don't really encompass the holistic view of who these people are and what's going on in this group. 
Um, and if, you know, I've, I've had experience doing peer evaluation and I, I don't do it anymore because it was always such a fraught thing to ask students to do that because I would both have those students like you, Ellie, who would never want to say anything, even if there really was a lot to be said, but also students who would abuse it um, because it was the only thing they had, right? As a way to kind of communicate with me that this was not working. And so, um, so peer evaluation, I think, is really fraught, really difficult to do well. Self-evaluation, that hasn't been something that you necessarily had as part of your group work? Um, I, think maybe, I think maybe once I've done self-evaluation, but on the same vein of peer evaluation, it's hard to say, oh, I did such a good job if you're also saying, no, all of these people yeah. helped me so much. Yes, so. yeah. Yeah, we did a workshop last semester on uh, on self evaluation, on authentic, like how to do self evaluation well. Because the reality is that like this is hard to evaluate yourself, and you know all of these things. Hannah said in the chat about group work, like it's such a great point that we're not born knowing these skills. We're not born knowing how to evaluate ourselves. We're not born knowing how to evaluate our group members or work with strangers. All of these are actually things we have to learn and practice to get better at. Knowing that group work is not going to go away, Ellie, I'm sorry to say, I cannot, <laughs> we cannot make that the outcome of this talk. What do you think, um, like in, in the, if you had, you know, control over everything except you can't get rid of group work, what would you recommend to improve it or to give students like you better options or better opportunities with this kind of work? I think that having very low stakes as your end product would be a great way to make group work more helpful for, pe for people or I guess myself. But um, if there is this big project that needs to get done, maybe trying to find a way where people do have to work together and you do have to work in a group, but the end product, it's very clear who did what and it can be graded individually. So you're not being graded based on how much time and effort someone else is putting into this project. Well, and I think it raises a really interesting question and I love it because um, it kind of takes me back to the question that I always feel sometimes gets lost when we have these conversations. And Hannah and Robin may recognize this because it's something, I, I've been talking about a little bit with this other program design forward that we're doing right now, which is about purpose and always trying to remember that we need to return to what's the purpose of what we're doing here, right? So when assigning a group project at the end of it, what is it that you need, you want to be able to see what change is it that you want to be able to witness in Ellie? from having done this group project, right? And so is there another way for Ellie to demonstrate that or show that or explain that or reflect upon that that isn't everybody gets the same grade and it, or we're basing this on peer evaluations and you have to rank your classmates against each other? Like, is there some other way for us to kind of witness what Ellie has experienced and you know, assess that um, as, as, you know, a final grade for a project. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there that, that sometimes we look over and we miss. That's kind of the end of our formal questions. I want to open this up now. And if other people I have opinions or thoughts or questions for Ellie, um, feel free. Yeah, go ahead, Robin. Um, I have probably just a very simple question, but I'm curious about it because I haven't taught um, in, in COVID particularly. So I'm curious, one of the biggest challenges I used to run into with group work with students was simply them finding the ability, the time to work together, especially because I was always teaching IDS and we had like non-traditional students and their hours were always different from each other. So like you had these residential, you know, traditional age students, and then you had like, you know, a mom who's raising kids or whatever. And so it was hard for them to get together. And everything was face to face, like nobody, we never, I mean, just three years ago, no student group was ever like, let's meet on Zoom. I think sometimes they would use like, you know, whatever random apps they were using, but not very often. 
So I guess I'm curious if there's opportunity in group work now with so much Zooming for groups to meet that way a little bit more conveniently. Or the other question I have is, is it that, because right now most of your Zooms are set up for you by faculty. And so I'm curious if student groups are using Zoom to do stuff or is that, has that not really taken off um, and really more of a thing that you use in your classes when faculty are kind of directing the Zooms? The semester long project that I have been referring to um, was in a class that was on Zoom completely. So we met on Zoom um, as a group, which, so that was much easier to um, find time to meet with the group for, in my experience. But we did have a few meetings where I would log on and two of the members just wouldn't come which seemed um, crazy because you can sit in your bed and do Zoom. Right. Right. I was thinking about, um, yeah, I mean, and that's like a whole other, just like, how do you motivate students? How do you engage them? Like, how do you make it relevant? All those questions. But also thinking like helping students learn how to run Zooms and like, set up the whiteboards and like, you know, just become better, you know, that that could be a key to making um, group work a little easier in terms of the logistics um, going forward, but it doesn't really speak to that, you know, I mean, if they're not motivated. I did like what you said about like, you know, you make these schedules at the beginning and you do that in so much many group projects, but it really doesn't do anything to like relieve the person who's doing all the work. But it seems like that would be another place where like digital tools could potentially, like one thing we do in the collab is like, we might have a brainstorming session about what we're gonna do. And then we oftentimes, <laughs> i.e. Hannah oftentimes makes these grids for us where we assign the different roles to people. But the cool thing is that that's kind of public and visible. So like a professor could see it, the group could see it. And then we have areas where you can write in like what you did. And so I'm wondering if somehow um, moving into slightly more digital environments could keep us, um, you know, could help because normally the professors don't see into your group works, right? But with these digital tools, they could see your Google Docs like a little bit more they could watch your progress and they could really see someone who's like not meeting their deadlines or whatever. I think that is a great um, idea in future group work, um, just kind of making it, making the work very separate and very apparent who did what um, would take the stress off of the person that is generally doing the entire assignment. Um, Leslie raised a good point in the uh, chat. It's the kind of point I love too about the difference between calling something an evaluation versus a reflection. And I admit, I kind of go, I go back and forth between calling it self evaluation versus self reflection. But I think it, I think you know those words matter. They signal something. And I wonder too, Ellie, for you, like if you hear that what you're doing is an evaluation, does that feel different? Does that feel like there are there more negative connotations to doing like? an evaluation versus we want you to reflect upon what you've learned. We want you to share, you know, your takeaways from this, what was good, what wasn't, what went well, what didn't. Um, is there a, is there any, is there any, do those, I mean, those words tend to matter to us a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, do you think that that signals something to students as well? Um, to me personally, it doesn't. I think um, the words have been used interchangeably. Yeah in regards to group projects that I've been a part of. So yeah. I don't think they have a connotation one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions or thoughts from folks? Well, maybe just to piggyback off of that, cause I'm, you know, I've seen a series of like the peer evaluations and maybe the structure of some of the questions, like, like I, I was like sitting there and so proud to hear you say, but sad to hear you say like, you don't ever want to like, you know, you're acknowledging there's maybe things happening with other students that you don't know of that's impacting their lack of engagement or performance on a project. Um, and I come back to that similar thread of like, 
the conflict management piece, but also like how, how do we create more of that environment for students through a process like that to share, you know, I think these were the strengths the student brought versus maybe these are where areas they could have, um, areas of growth for them, or I don't know, I'm just wondering if, even if there's some structure in the questions that don't help with that. Or maybe it's just peer evaluations aren't the thing to do. I don't know. <laughs> I think, it, no, I think it's a really good point that like the the way you ask those questions, I think really does matter. Um, and I, I say that because I've, I've asked questions badly and gotten bad results with these kinds of tools. And then when I rethought them and asked them in ways that I think are better, I get different kinds of results. So I actually do think that makes a really big difference. I wanna say the last time, it was in that class I was talking about where we had to do so much conflict resolution. When we did, we did do a, a group evaluation at the end that students answered. It wasn't a peer evaluation. It was like, we might've even called it a group reflection, but we were very clear. We weren't looking for them to name names, right? It was about how did you work together as a group? Like, or think of yourself as an organism, the group. How did the group work? What didn't work well? What did work well? What would you have done differently? Um, and it's a different way. I mean, and that was also in an ungraded class. So like going back to a lot of where I think Ellie's anxiety about this comes from, you know, there wasn't this pressure that, you know, everybody was going to get the same grade and, you know, you, you were on the hook necessarily, but, um, but I do think there are ways of framing those questions that elicit different kinds of reflection. Uh, I think Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say that taking the individual out of the question would probably elicit a better response from students just because then it doesn't feel like you're right. um, individualizing someone or harping on one specific person. I think also, um, you know, we were thinking about this always as an end of project thing, but probably to work it more into the project management scope would be helpful because you could imagine if at the end of every week, in terms of like a self-assessment, you would have to say, you know, here's what I did this week. Here's what I learned from it. Here's how I'm thinking of taking that learning and moving to next week. If you do that after the very first week and someone realizes, oh shit, like I have nothing to put in the box about what I did this week, you sort of start to set a, a tone that we're expecting you to have this stuff. So it, it's both project management, but it also gives them a reflective piece. Um, and I think even doing right from the beginning, you know, things like a chance to say, who's somebody who really moved your group forward this week and how did they move it forward and you know what have you learned from watching them you know that you could you know think about in in the context of yourself but it also helps students understand oh every week people are going to be looking at what did I do how did I contribute and how did the group move as a you know so I think making it, helping people understand, and this is one of the things we do, I think, talk about a little bit in TWP and in design thinking is that you don't have to have immediate success, but every week you have to tweak your project. Every week you have to, so it's the same thing with group work. Like you're not gonna be awesome at the beginning, but you have to start thinking at the beginning about what you're going to improve every week. So I think building that into the project, building the group dynamics into the project management flow would probably be helpful. Yeah, it, it, there are two things I wanted to say, and then I probably, unless any, see if anybody else has anything, we'll probably wrap things up. But the first thing I wanted to say, and this piggybacks on what Robin was just talking about, I think is as, as you were talking, Robin, I was thinking about scope of project and time and effort and how, how very, because we tend to be really ambitious with group projects, sometimes I think we don't necessarily recognize that like we might need to dial back a little bit so that there's time to do these kinds of reflections and this kind of management and organizing. You know, we can't ignore that that has to happen. And so we need to kind of build that in, I think. 
And then the other thing um, that I'll say, and I told Ellie this the other day, I was meeting with a faculty member a few weeks ago who was, who was a, a newer, um, newer to teaching and was talking about having assigned their first big group projects. And, you know, it didn't go swimmingly, which, you know, was fine. You know, we try things out all the time that go, don't necessarily turn out how we hoped. But what she said was, she said, I hadn't realized until then that, you know, group work, it's a pedagogical choice. And I think that's such an important takeaway that like, we shouldn't just do group work because it's what everybody else is doing or because it seems like a good fit or because it's what we've done in the past. We need to be intentional about assigning this work, how we introduce this to students, how we talk about it with students, how we design it, how we give space for it and make space for it. Like, I think that intentionality is definitely missing in a lot of situations and maybe in some of the experiences that Ellie has had. Um, and maybe with more intentions, you know, intentionality, we can kind of improve the overall landscape of this. I'm gonna go ahead and any other final thoughts, Ellie or Leslie, or I think Hannah and Robin are both heading out to other events. I would just say going off of what you just said, if some of the professor, professors had at the beginning, maybe sat down and said, this is why we're doing group work. This is yep. why we want you to work together. Um, it would have made maybe the process more bearable if you just knew going in what the intention was behind it instead of here's a project, here's a group, go, go. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ellie. This was just really, really great. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.